I saw one girl, she must have been maybe about 11, the look of terror in her eyes, as if she would never be able to trust another human being again. I've seen many, many colleagues get killed. Malaysia's committed wholesale massacre of people based on their ethnicity. I found myself in a refugee camp of a million people with thousands of people starving to death. We have almost 17,000 disappeared in Lebanon. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, millions of people have been murdered. What are we as citizens living during this time doing about that? Wars have been so total that countries emerge from this conflict totally destroyed. Imagine that you come out of a conflict and you say, what do we do now? You have to rebuild the bridges and the roads and the schools and the health systems, but you also have to look at the past. Transitional justice is about bringing justice closer to people and to victims when justice has been an ideal, a concept, and an institution that has been very far away from people. How we do that is trying to establish exceptional mechanisms, such as special criminal prosecutions, such as truth commissions, reparations programs, in order for that relationship between state and citizens to be more normal. Transitional justice was a very small academic idea. Then the South African Truth Commission had a major impact on the field. Now it has grown into a situation where you have about 40 Truth and Reconciliation Commissions having been run at international tribunals for Rwanda and Yugoslavia, reparations programs having been implemented. That has produced a situation in which all countries which are coming out of conflict now are aware of this idea of transitional justice. We're dealing with post-conflict societies all over the world. One of the key issues is accountability. For those who are the architects of those crimes need to be held accountable. Victims need to be at the center of the process. They've suffered. The truth commissions are really an important element, truth-telling, so that that society can confront the truth of what happened. We need to take steps to make sure this doesn't happen again. The foot soldiers who torched houses and raped and killed people will think that they can do that again and get away with it. But also, the people who are attacked, if they see that the state has done nothing to bring justice to them, they are also likely to start arming themselves. And we are dealing with groups that, on the ground, are pushing for truth, justice, and reconciliation in their respective countries. And they are the ones who are pushing this agenda. And our role is to enable them to do that. Right after the fall of Ben Ali in Tunisia, we did send a mission to assess what their needs are and what their vision is for justice and accountability during the transition there. What ICTJ brings to the equation is that we connect what's going on on the ground to policymakers and capitals and the UN and the international community writ large. Ultimately, as an organization, we promote justice on the domestic level because we believe that it's really at that level that you have permanent solutions to impunity. You can take lots of examples of where there was a, there was a failure to confront the past. You end up with peace agreements that are sanctioned by the international community and power sharing arrangements between perpetrators of mass atrocities. These countries relapse into conflict again. The field has to guard against the sense that sets of double standards are developing. At ICTJ, we ran a project on US accountability, looking at more systematic policies that the US was involved in, including a policy that allowed for torture of detainees. It's very important for an organization such as ICTJ not to shy away from those problems. If we're not involved in situations like that, then we are, in a way, giving credence to people who say, why is it always about us? Transitional justice is all about facing denial tactics. There is no armed conflict going on here. There is no repression. This happened in Argentina for a very long time. It's very clear, flat out, literal denial. 
Nothing is happening here. I would like my children to learn the history of Indonesia in a truthful manner, to learn about the atrocities that took place, to learn why it happened, so that they can also be engaged in the process of trying to unravel the impact of the conflict. Even if the possibilities are small and the work we need to do is great, that barking dog that justice will catch up to you needs to be ever-present. And I think that has a significant effect on deterring leaders from undertaking the sort of actions that they've undertaken throughout the history of mankind. It's a danger not to confront the past. It's a danger not to address the suffering of victims. It's a danger not to have accountability. It's a danger not to have the truth.